Welcome back, folks, to the LightEd online video show. This is a LightEd COVID-19 update. It's March the 23rd, 2020, and this is brought to you by Keystone Technologies. Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H dot com, baby. Light made easy, the retrofit kings. Hey, a little more serious today than normal, Greg. That's right. I'm trying to figure out where we're at and where we're headed and what we need to be doing, especially as business owners. You know, we have to make a lot of decisions right now. and. I don't feel like there's a real uh, direction on what that decision should be. You know, there's some indications. There's some people saying, maybe you should do this or you should do that. I know it depends on the area you're at and what your government, your local government is saying. Uh, But when you don't have, you know, a, a mandated order, what do you do? You act responsibly. Exactly. And you... So how do you do that? You... Well, I mean, I think, and this is where, um, you know, we've talked about it before. Uh, when complexity comes, okay, when when uh, people who are not in leadership positions, okay, encounter complexity and they're not responsible for anything, they can often choose defiance as a way to clear, or opposition as a way to um, make sense of the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have all these Twitter things, shut down Canada, shut down the U S lock it all down, all this kind of stuff. Okay. And while I believe in free speech and I support people's right to express their opinions and it's what I'm doing right now, it's just my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. I also believe that our institutions and our governments are fundamentally competent. And That's what they're there for, right? Yes. And I, I yeah. think people that work at the center for, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, for uh, Health Canada, the people that are in these positions um, are people that should be in those positions. And, and you know, the, the people at the top there can argue about who the person for strategic leadership long-term should be, whatever that is. But right now, I'm listening to them. And I'm not following hashtags on Twitter to make my decisions. I'm not following public pressure um, from people that you know don't know what they're saying. Yesterday, the Prime Minister of Canada came out and he said, "We're not declaring a state of emergency yet. We're not going to do that, right. and we're going to and we're going to leave it to the municipalities and the provinces to manage because they're unique. Canada is a huge country." Okay, so what happens in Manitoba and the U.S. is in the same boat. What happens in Manitoba is not necessarily the same as what happens in Ontario. And even southern Ontario is very different than northern Ontario. Okay, so and I'm, I'm certain it's the same in the United States. What's happening in Washington is very different from what's happening in Florida or Mississippi or Texas and so on. And so what the federal governments are doing are they're allowing the system we have in place of layered governments from municipal to provincial or state, municipality, federal to do their jobs. And the people in those jobs are largely competent and the institutions they run are competent. And I believe and support them. And so as business owners, you're talking about essential services. Okay. Is lighting an essential service? I think it is in the long term. I don't know if it is in the short term. So I'm going with the decision I've made to lay off a lot of my staff, have certain people working from home. Scott's at home right now. So the producer of the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast is at home. Uh, you're in your office. I'm in my office. We're running a skeleton crew here. And so I think it's incumbent upon us as leaders to monitor what the, what the people we have appointed to these positions and our elected leaders are telling us and, and, and act accordingly. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah, and I'd say that that's definitely the right move. It's not there isn't a, a clear order for lighting companies to stop their business or or to halt all operations. I think it's it's understanding what's out there, understanding what guidelines we have right now with the whole social distancing and keeping away from people and whatever it might be. Uh, but that that to me doesn't mean or doesn't tell me that I need to shut anything down at this point. So I'm in the same boat where we're just hearing it out. We're making plans and we're and we're flexing the schedule out and rotating people in and out, things like that. But to completely shut it down, I don't think it's there yet. And I don't know, you're going to need clear direction to make that call, I believe. I mean, as a business owner, you can do whatever you want, but until 
you hear from leadership exactly what to do, it's it's your call. And I think that I think that uh, we're seeing a lot of people making their call that is maybe overreacting somewhat to it. I don't. I know that's maybe dangerous to say right now, but I think I think there is a lot of overreaction in that. Take your time. Take it easy. Think it through before you decide. We have these these institutions for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's called the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. That's what it's called. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, like that's what they call it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been following the U.S. news too closely simply because I've been totally absorbed in the um, in the Canadian side of it, the Toronto side of it. But you know, I, I did read some articles on the weekend. There are a lot of differences between Italy and Canada in terms of the way we live. For sure. Okay. Right? Their cities are more densely packed. They often have three or four generations in the same home. Okay, that never that doesn't happen in Toronto. Very rarely do you have sure. three or four generations in the same home. And then multiple generations. So both sets of mother and father-in-law live with the with the children. That's very common in, in northern Italy. And for sure, having your grandparents living in the home with the parents and the children is extremely common. That's not the case in, in Ontario. Very rare. Does it happen? Of course. Um, so the, the situation in Italy is, and the situation in Toronto are not the same, which is why we rely on our health authorities, the people in charge, the mayor of the city of Toronto, the premier of the province of Ontario, the prime minister of Canada, and the like in Minnesota and all throughout the United States. We rely on them. We rely on those institutions to direct us, to tell us. And what they've told us is that if your business is non-essential, it's up to you to... The mayor of Toronto said yesterday, you know if your job's not essential for sure. If you have a question about whether your job's not essential, you ask. You ask your boss. But if you are... It, you know, if you're if, if you're in, a, in a, it's something, you know when it's not essential, for sure. Some things, other things are not so are not so certain, and, and lighting is one of those things that's not as certain, especially when, you know, just last week we rush shipped uh, two F six T five BLBs to a laboratory in Manitoba. We've had a bunch of weird orders for fluorescent lamps and and for uh, like just odd stuff that you know we do get orders for, but not in this level of quantity. And so mm -hmm. maybe people are dusting off old machines where where uh, they need the indicator light is burned out in the back of an old respirator. I have no idea, but I know that people are ordering them, and I know that some of them are going to not all of them, but some of them are going to hospitals, some of them are going to labs, and so we want to support those clients as lighting distributors. If the authorities come out and say no, everybody's got to go home. You got to go home. You're not in charge, but you're also not in charge of what you're what you're supposed to do. Like you're you're not it's not incumbent upon a lighting distributor to say that all lighting distribution companies should shut down. Mm -hmm. No. Your job is to minimize your staff. Your job is to work people from home if they can and continue to ship your orders. If the government comes out and says something like all durable goods wholesale companies need to shut down for 2 weeks. Greg, are you going to obey that order? course and that's what i'm told to do for sure when you're told when you're directed you make that call Until right then they're not going to come out yeah they're not going to yeah. come out and say lighting companies need to shut down they're going to say something like durable goods wholesale or warehouses right. and shipping offices something that very broad a broad sweep over the economy but you know other than that i mean uh we have one guy in the back two guys on the order desk and our our walk-in counter is shut down other people are laid off. Some people are at home, working from home. What are you going to do? Keep plugging away. I think you have to. I think the responsibility for you is, is to not shut down, actually. I think the responsibility to you is to look at your operation, to break it down to its bare bones, to assess what part of your operation could be used by um, other companies to support the fight against COVID-19, to keep the base economy going, the the essential part of the economy going, food production, um, this kind of stuff, grocery stores, the things they need. But after that, you should listen very carefully to the authorities and do what you're told. But you should not be putting crazy pressure on people or so engage in social distancing, yes, but social shaming, no. Because you don't know what other people are doing. You, have, you don't know what their job is because they don't have a uniform on. doesn't mean they're not essential. 
or they haven't been determined as essential. And I hope I'm not acting like a jerk here because I just feel like the uh, the hashtag shut down Canada, hashtag shut down Pennsylvania, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, we rely on our leaders, our health experts to tell us. And when they tell us, they will we'll be ready to obey those orders. Not going to listen to a hashtag. Bingo. This has been the Light Town Online Video Show, folks. Hey, stay safe out there. Keystone Technologies. K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com, baby. That's keystonetech.com. Check them out, especially now when you have some time.